A new inverter just arrived in the mail and I'm going to unbox it and test it and we're going to see if it works well or if it fails like some old ones. Now this is the upgraded version and Reliable Electric sent it out to me to review and I'm going to be able to share with you guys as we do it. So it, it might work well, it might not. We're going to find out together. Oh boy. <laughs> Man. After I get this out of the box, we're going to take the cover off and we're going to compare it side by side to the old inverter that did not work well. Oh man, and just like the old one, it looks like they double boxed it. <laughs> All right, come on, here we go. Well, it says pure sine wave inverter. All right, we have a pair of cables. Yeah, so it's still not listed in gauge, and I can't read the Chinese characters that are on here. Now the pair of these for 8,000 watts, I don't know. We still have the terminal cover plate and some spare fuses. Let's see if we can read any of the new manual. This one looks like it is in English, which is awesome. It says the surge power is two times higher than the rated power. And it says standby loss is less than 40 watts. Conversion efficiency is more than or equal to 85%. Well, it arrived with no damage to the packaging. It looks in good shape. Well, here it is, the new inverter. So pure sine wave inverter. So from this angle, you can tell this is a little bit shorter. This one's taller, but this one's definitely wider than this guy. Overall, this feels like a more compact design. Two plugs on this one, four plugs on this one. That looks like the same as this one. And again, this plastic cover is inside the fuse bag, the spare fuses. So here's the new versus old. Just do a nice pan shot here, you can see both. So the battery terminals look the same on both models. You're going to come in. They still have a connecting copper bar in the back here between the two. Let's see here, we've got these things that look like transformers, one, two, three, and four. And over here we had nine. So that's, uh, that's probably a good thing. Oh, I see something else that's nice. They have a copper bar that's connecting across them. So I'm hoping that means that even though uh, these wires are still different lengths, maybe that copper bar will also help distribute some of that load. But I don't know for sure. I'm just noticing some things that are different between the two and pointing them out. Uh, this guy is a big coil of copper. And it looks like we still have that over here, but now it's two. Two of these rings, donuts, and only one donut over here. Uh, so those things look like they've gotten beefier. Capacitors over here, it looks like we got five, and we have six over on this side. Sometimes people ask me if the fuses are replaceable. This one, you can certainly see everything. It looks like they made this one in two levels. Nothing's loose on these wires. So over here on the front, it looks like this terminal was not crimped. It looks like it's just soldered. And it looks like there's a heavier gauge wire that comes up to the terminal block. And this red wire that's coming off, which looks like it is jumping between these four outlets, that is a thinner gauge wire. Now that's the same way that this one was built 
you can see a fatter wire leading to your terminal block and a thinner wire then jumps over to your outlets. And that's why the manufacturer has recommended that you only plug in low, uh, low amp draws to these and then do your high amp stuff at the terminal block. I will say that on the old model, the hot and neutral look like fatter wires than the new model. These look much thinner gauge. Now I'm a little bit concerned about the thickness of these two wires. This is the main hot leg and the main neutral, which lead to the terminal block. And these look way too thin for 8,000 watts at 120 volts, which would be about 66 amps. For comparison's sake, right here is a piece of 10 gauge THHN or THWN wire. Pretty basic wire. And if I hold this up, they look identical in diameter. Now 10 gauge is rated for 30 amps, so about half what it's supposed to be. Now yes, the jacket could be different diameters of the two, but it's not like this wire is a very thick jacket. And that just seems way undersized for me. But let me know in the comments below what you guys think. Well, let's take off one of these plates and look inside. So we take that off and we see a heat sink. Over here is the grounding lug. It actually looks like that heat sink is one giant board. Instead of breaking it apart into multiple heat sinks, this one is one massive chunk of aluminum. Wow. The MOSFETs look like they are sandwiched in between the aluminum heat sink and the circuit board. And it looks like these, these uh, prongs here that are sticking up are actually the legs of the MOSFETs. There's where they screwed the MOSFETs to the board. Oh, that's an interesting way to do it, huh? That looks neat. Those guys there. Very neat. All right, cool. Well, I'll put this back together and then we will hook it up to the battery and see what it can do. I'm gonna use my brand new battery for testing this inverter. And I'm gonna hook up this little outlet down here so I can test the inverter with some loads. So I'm gonna run this wire up to this terminal block. It says in the manual, the red is the live, then black is neutral and yellow is ground. This is set up as a single phase 120 volts. Hook the wire in the direction that you're going to screw it. So this black wire is the neutral and this red wire is the hot leg. There's two covers on this model and so you first start with the plastic cover and then we can cover that with this metal cover. When you go to attach these cables, make sure the uh, copper ring terminal is first. We, you want that to have a nice clean connection. So you're gonna go with flat washer, then the lock washer, and then the nut. Great, nice and tight. Okay, next we can move over to our positive side. On my setup, I have circuit breakers for the batteries. So I'm gonna go ahead and turn them off so I'm not gonna have a spark when I go to attach this. It actually looks like there's a little scorch mark right here. Let's get a close up. So maybe that scorch mark happened from a test at the factory, I don't know. <laughs> for my situation, I'm going to take off the ring terminal to attach to these posts, but your situation might vary. Before I switch the circuit breakers on and send the electricity to the inverter, I want to pre-charge the capacitors inside. So I'm going to take a small resistor. This resistor is connected to the positive and I'm going to touch it to the terminal and that's going to pre-charge the capacitors. Okay, so I'm just holding it here. 
That should be good. And now I'm gonna go ahead and flip the circuit breakers on. There we go. And if we flip this on. Nice. Okay, let's go ahead and start plugging some stuff in and see if it works. Okay, let's start with this light bulb. Ha! Ah, the light bulb works! Awesome! It says only 3 amps, so not very powerful, but let's try a drill press. Didn't seem to have any problem. Okay, great! Okay, a 9 amp bandsaw. And that voltage actually did not sag, it went up slightly as we did that. That's great, my other inverter will have a voltage sag. Heat gun, let's start the heat gun on low. It works. And on high, this is 1500 watts. It did pretty well. Excellent. 15 amp table saw. Next, we're gonna test this miter saw. Now, I'm very excited about testing this miter saw because this miter saw overloaded the earlier version of this 8,000 watt inverter. So I'm really excited to see if it can pass the muster with this guy. Will this 8,000 watt inverter be able to power this miter saw? So here we go. Oh man! Oh, that felt great! Oh, there's not even any voltage sag. This is amazing. Let's check this out. Wow. That is excellent. Ha. Huh. I'm going to plug the shot back into the inverter as well. Let's cut this one and three quarter inch wide piece of LVL. Oh, ha! It did it! It did it! <laughs> and it did it really well. I was pushing hard because I wanted to give this the best test I could. That's impressive. <laughs> The hardest thing to start I have in this whole garage is this air compressor. Now the rating on this air compressor is only 13 amps, so less amps can running than the saw was. But starting this motor is tough, and I've had inverters that can't pull this off. So we have 90, <clears throat> let's take a look. We have 90 PSI in the tank right now, so it's starting under load. Let's see, it might, start right up when I plug it in. I might have to release some air pressure. Let's find out. All right, so I'll have to release some air pressure. Oh, I must have the switch off because it would normally kick on by now. All right, here we go. We're gonna throw the switch. Oh my God!
Wow! Well, the test was a huge success. Reliable Inverter certainly upped their game with this new version of the 8,000 watt inverter. And when I squeezed the trigger of the miter saw or when I uh, turned on that table saw, I mean, those blades started right up. They didn't have any hesitation. It felt the same as when I plugged it into grid power. And that is, you know, really impressive. Usually those two big saws with 15 amp motors, usually they have a big sag on, on an inverter uh, until, and the inverter drops in voltage until they kick back up. This thing actually looked like it went up in voltage slightly when you applied the load to it. So I don't know how they pulled that off, but that was pretty neat. Uh, it, was, it was nice feeling uh, using those tools. You know, my only concern with it is that the internal wires don't look nearly capable enough to carry uh, 8,000 watts. So I'm going to have to hook up multiple outlets to the terminals uh, in order to get enough watts on here to test the full capacity of 8,000 watts. So thank you Reliable Electric for sending this out to me and letting me do the review. Well, thank you all very much for watching the video and checking out the new Reliable Electric Inverter. I think they did a great job uh, upping their game with this one. So please hit the like button, subscribe to the channel, and check out all the links in the description below. That really helps me out if you use those. Thank you very much.